Welcome to the Dubai Navigator. My name is Lucas Vincent. This is a sequel video to our guide on all areas in Dubai. In that other video, we only briefly mentioned Dubai's many suburbs. Now in this video, we are going to cover Dubai's villa neighborhoods in much more detail. In Dubai, detached houses, semi-detached houses and townhouses are commonly referred to as villas. If you're not based in Dubai, using the term villa for a townhouse may seem a bit of an exaggeration. But that's just the way the term is used here in Dubai. We again split this video into sections by neighborhood and cover them one by one in the order shown on this map. All highlighted areas in our custom map allow for freehold property ownership by foreigners. The individual colors don't have a meaning and simply show the borders between unique freehold areas. Let's start with the upscale communities along Dubai's Gulf Coast. In the very south we have Palm Jebel Ali, which was just recently relaunched in September 2023. Few people know that the actual first villas here were already sold in the early 2000s. Those purchases were cancelled and the original investors were reimbursed for their payments. 20 years later, the relaunched villas come in a variety of modern styles, with property sizes increasing the further out we go. At the end of the fronts, you find vacant plots available for custom-built properties. Plans for what to build on the outer crescent remain secretive. Before the great financial crisis in 2008, developers such as Demac launched oceanfront apartment buildings here and even started with excavation works. Pillars for a highway that would connect the palm at three entry points were also erected. However, Nakheel cancelled and reversed any previous land sales and now is expected to demand higher asking prices for the same plots. Recently released models suggest that the Outer Crescent will feature villas and hotels, which would go against original plans from 15 years ago, which envisioned the construction of high-rise towers. Directly south, at the entrance of Palm Jebel Ali, we have Veneto, an already completed villa cluster by Nakheel Properties. In this area, we also have a number of other cancelled projects, such as Marinat Al Arab, a second Dubai marina of sorts. As we are focusing on villas in this video, we won't look at those projects. Let us know in the comments below if you would like us to make another in-depth video on all of Dubai's visionary and in many cases cancelled projects. Next up is Palm Jumeirah, the original Palm Island. Except for a few custom properties, the vast majority of houses here are built in traditional Arabic and Mediterranean styles, as was customary back in the early 2000s when Palm Jumeirah was launched. That being said, a small number of custom villas in modern styles are all found on the outer edges of the Palm's fronts. Front G is home to most custom villas, which are also Dubai's priciest. As a result, Front G has become known as Dubai's billionaire's row. There are also a number of villas and townhouses that are part of resort hotels on the outer crescent, such as the villas at the Kempinski Palm residences and the recently launched Six Senses Resort by Select Group. Unlike Palm Jebel Ali, Palm Jumeirah only has one access point to the mainland. For advanced projections of property prices in all Dubai neighborhoods and detailed comparisons of rental returns, check out our advanced real estate analysis services at thedubainavigator.com. We also offer a range of complementary services from international tax optimization to business relocation and international estate planning. The DubaiNavigator.com – everything you need for tax-optimized relocation and maximum return investments in Dubai. The World Islands also feature a number of freestanding villas, as part of the Heart of Europe development by Kleindienst Properties, in particular the Germany villas and the Sweden palaces. There are also the floating seahorse villas with three stories, one of which is underwater. None of these properties has been handed over as of 2023. Ensuring that this video is complete, 
we shouldn't forget about the small number of very pricey townhouses on Blue Waters Island, and single family houses at the still under construction Masa Al Arab Resort next to Burj Al Arab. Continuing our journey northwards, we have a number of reclaimed islands and peninsulas by Mira's properties, namely Jumeirah Bay, La Mer and Pearl Jumeirah. On Jumeirah Bay Island we have three types of villas and townhouses. First, a number of villas that are part of the Bulgari residences by Miras. The Amalfi villas and townhouses also by Miras. And a number of other villas by smaller independent developers, such as the C. Mero villas. You can also buy individual villa plots directly from the master developer Miras and build your own custom home here. In La Mer South, we similarly have vacant plots for self-development, and villas developed by smaller, third-party developers such as the Ellington Villa Collection by Ellington Properties. La Mer North, on the other hand, consists of the Sur La Mer townhouses by Miras. These are designed in a Mediterranean style, similar to the nearby Port de La Mer apartment buildings. Lastly, Pearl Jumeirah Island only features vacant individual plots and custom homes by smaller developers. Let's move further inland. There is a small number of floating houseboats in Business Bay Canal, called Marazi Floating Villas. Next, we have the first large mainland villa community, District 1 by Maidan Properties. District 1 consists of one of the world's largest artificial lagoons, marketed as Crystal Lagoon. The first of its type in Dubai, it is the inspiration of a number of other lagoons currently under development, such as the Mac Lagoons, the Lagoon at the Oasis and South Bay. We will cover all of these later in this video. Villas in District 1 are available in a variety of styles, fully detached and semi-detached. While the central location and stunning views of Dubai's skyline are the area's main doors, the artificial lagoon has seen its share of maintenance issues. The lagoon's first section opened in 2013 and reached its current size at the end of 2018. Since then, subsections have been closed down for extended periods for repair and maintenance works. The lagoon contains fresh water and can be accessed by residents for a variety of water sports, from swimming to kayaking. Original plans envisioned for the lagoon to be extended towards Maidan Mall, with a water park. These plans are on hold due to Maidan's financial difficulties. Villas that are still under construction here have been reassigned to sister company Nakiel, ensuring that property investors are minimally impacted by Maidan's financial woes. In nearby Sopa Heartland we have three types of houses, all by Sopa Properties. These include townhouses, detached single-family houses in a variety of sizes, and large kennel front villas. The kennel, planned to be built between Sopa Heartland and Azizi Riviera, has not yet started construction, due to the aforementioned financial difficulties of Medan. It is currently unclear if and when the canal will start construction. Azizi, the developer of the apartment buildings on the southern side of the canal, announced the construction of an artificial lagoon in place of the canal in order to appease previous off-plan investors. How this will be financed and whether Sopa Heartland will benefit from this change remains unknown. Sopa Heartland is also the first residential community covered in this video with fully operating schools, namely Heartland International School and North London Collegiate School Dubai. Sopa Heartland 2 nearby was just recently launched and contains a small lagoon, high rises and a number of villas, including the Sopa Estates. Villas here are all detached and large in size. Surrounding the Maidan horse race track we have the Millennium Estates with detached single family houses and the Maidan townhouses. Currently under development next door is Nad Al Sheba, a community by Miras. Nad Al Sheba consists of two parts. The first one is composed of vacant lots for self development. The second part is Nad Al Sheba Gardens, designed in a postmodern style with a northern European touch and matching vegetation. 
no palm trees in sight, they are detached, semi-detached and townhouse options. Nearby is District 7 by MAG Properties. District 7 consists of MAG I and Ketura Reserve. In MAG I we have a large number of tightly spaced townhouses that were launched before the pandemic and are close to completion as of 2023. Ketura Reserve, on the other hand, was just recently launched and is much more spacious, more expensive and ultra-modern in design. Mac Properties is similarly developing the even more luxurious and similarly modern Ritz-Carlton residences and villas along Dubai Creek. You can choose a property to invest in based on your personal preferences alone. However, with so many attractive options to choose from, why not make a financial investment decision based on market data? Which areas have the highest rental returns? Which neighborhoods are overvalued and which are undervalued? Which neighborhoods are likely to outperform the market? Here at the Dubai Navigator we collect and analyze market data to identify the best property investments. We project house prices and rental returns well into the future and help our clients save hundreds of thousands of dollars in the process. Here Dubai is only 100% independent property research firm and never sell real estate and don't work with any agents or developers. We just analyze the market to help you optimize your investment strategy. Visit the property strategy section on our website thedubainavigator.com for a full overview of our services. Next up is Mirif, one of Dubai's most affordable communities. Located right next to Dubai International Airport, on the border to the neighboring Emirate of Sharjah, Mirif offers a large range of villa styles and sizes by various developers. Some of them recently completed, such as Mushrif Village, and some of them older. While Mirif features the Mirif City Center Mall and Dubai's largest public park, Mushrif Park, the area's square foot prices are low for a reason. Most of the properties are impacted by airplane noise from the airport. Slightly more expensive but still affordable are the villas in Silicon Oasis. Silicon Oasis is a mixed-use neighborhood that is home to the Free Zone Ifza, offices, apartment buildings and Silicon Central Mall with a large hypermarket. In the community center are semi-detached and fully detached single-family houses, the last ones of which were completed in 2010. Across the highway we find another fairly established villa neighborhood. Simply called The Villa, the community was developed by Dubai Properties between 2013 and 2019, with some of the properties being custom built. Houses here are all detached, large in size and feature big plots. Architectural styles are on the complex side and based on a mix of Mediterranean and Arab elements. The main highlight of the area is Dubai Academic City, as we highlighted in our video on all Dubai neighborhoods. The main highway, Al Ain Road, goes all the way to Al Ain, the second largest city in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi, on the border with Oman. As we travel further inland along Al Ain Road, we pass by Dubai Outlet Mall, marketed as the world's largest outlet shopping center, and Dubai's largest landfill. The large landmass west of Al Ain Road is called Dubai Land, an area with dozens of smaller suburban villa clusters. Deep inside the Emirate and Dubai land we have the Valley, one of Ima's youngest and most affordable communities. From here it is around 30 kilometers to downtown Dubai. The Valley is still in an early phase of development and will primarily consist of townhouses. There are also long-term plans to build a town center with apartment buildings, as well as a pedestrian mall, modeled after similar developments in the US. The valley puts an emphasis on greenery and sports, with a bike and running path planned to intersect the neighborhood. There are regular launches of new phases. Right next to the valley is the Mark Hills 2, formerly known as Sequoia Oxygen. The Mark Hills 2 is by far one of Dubai's most affordable villa communities, mostly due to its remote location. You can buy a three-bedroom townhouse here for less than 1 million dirhams, 
or around 260,000 US dollar. Once completed, the community will be one of Dubai's largest, with more than 3,000 villas and townhouses and more than 4,300 apartments. The Mark Hills too has large parks within its community that are laid out to support redevelopment into a golf course in the future. However, there are no concrete plans to do so as of the time this video was published. Due to its vast size, the community supports a number of leisure amenities absent in many other, smaller neighborhoods. These include a mini water park with a lazy river and an artificial beach, tennis, basketball and even soccer courts, as well as a cricket ground and an artificial lake. While the community is heavy in townhouses, more recent launches include the pricier Cavalli Villas. Roberto Cavalli is an Italian fashion brand that was acquired by Hussein Sashwani, who is also the owner of Demarque Properties back in 2019. That's why Demarque regularly sells Cavalli branded properties across Dubai. Located nearby is the UAE's military Minhat Air Base, which does lead to occasional noise issues for suburbs located right underneath the airstrip. As we move back into the heart of Dubai land, we reach Town Square by Enshama, Reem by Ima, and Sherry Woods by Miraz. The Town Square community is named after the centerpiece square in the middle of the community. The square includes green areas, a splash kids water play area, and a variety of small stores and restaurants. Surrounding the park are apartment buildings and townhouses. The neighborhood and the developer behind it and Sharma are almost synonymous, as the area is the company's only development. And Sharma was founded by the former CEO of Ema Properties International Business Operations. Most of the launches here happened between 2014 and 2018, with development having slowed down since then. Again, due to the relatively remote location of and Sharma Town Square, Prices are very competitive. Right opposite we have Riem, a fairly standard villa neighborhood by Ima. Built in the mid-2010s, the community consists exclusively of semi-detached houses in a contemporary design. Next, we have Cherry Woods by Miraz. Cherry Woods is Miraz's most affordable real estate development anywhere in Dubai and consists exclusively of townhouses in a modern design and vegetation inspired by temperate climates. Nearby we have the intersecting Emirates Road, a highway connecting Dubai all the way to the Emirates of Sharjah and Ras al-Khaimah. Along Emirates Road is the construction site of the freight railway line of Etihad Railway from Abu Dhabi. Next we have three large housing communities by Dubai Properties, a subsidiary of the government-owned Dubai Holding. The first one is Mudon, which features a range of townhouses, semi-detached houses and premium fully detached houses. The architectural style could be considered modern Arabic. Part of the community is also a number of apartment buildings. And right next to Mudon we have Serena, a Mediterranean inspired community consisting exclusively of semi-detached houses. The third and last community is Villa Nova which consists of a number of sub-clusters ranging in architectural styles, such as La Rosa, Amaranta and La Quinta. There are townhouses, semi-detached and fully detached single-family houses. Square foot prices are on the affordable side, particularly when compared to the nearby Arabian Ranches developments by Ima. Arabian Ranches is a brand developed by Ima Properties and used for three Dubai suburbs. Arabian Ranches 1, 2 and 3. The oldest phase, Arabian Ranches 1, started construction in 2002 and was mostly complete by 2009. Just like other communities planned and built before the Great Financial Crisis in 2008, plots in Arabian Ranches 1 are significantly larger than in newer communities. There's more greenery and more houses feature pools. This can be seen right here at the border between Arabian Ranches 1 and Arabian Ranches 2, which was launched 10 years later in 2012. The older Arabian Ranches 1 are greener and more spacious. Arabian Ranches 1 features the Arabian Ranches Golf Club. 
There are multiple subclusters within the community with a large range in house sizes and prices. The largest villas face the golf course and cost around 10 million US dollar or 40 million dirham. Also part of Arabian Ranches run across the highway is the Dubai Polo and Equestrian Club with villas around it. Homes here are extra spacious, mostly include their own private pools and start at several million US dollars. In comparison, the newer communities of Arabian Ranches 2 and 3 are more modest. There is no golf course and the most expensive villas in those communities top out at around half the prices and sizes of the costliest villas in Arabian Ranches 1. Similarly, the smallest houses in Arabian Ranches 2 and 3 are considerably smaller and more affordable than in Arabian Ranches 1. Their townhouses, semi-detached and fully detached houses in Arabian Ranches 2 and 3. While Arabian Ranches 2 is a fairly standard community built in a traditional Mediterranean style, Arabian Ranches 3 differentiates itself through a lazy river and a network of water canals. Arabian Ranches 3 is the only community still under development, with only some units complete. Overwhelmed by the large number of neighborhoods? Do you want to know which areas have the highest net rental return? Which neighborhoods are at risk of declining prices? And which developments have above average construction quality? Here at the Dubai Navigator we answer all of those questions and more as part of our research packages. We analyze the entire market to identify the best long-term investments whether you rent out or move in yourself. Visit the property strategy section on our website thedubainavigator.com for a full overview of our services. Here you can also book a free consultation with us to find out how we can assist you. Stop guessing and start investing based on research. Located nearby are numerous other communities by smaller developers, each offering unique advantages. Dubai Sustainable City is Dubai's first and only eco-oriented villa cluster with photovoltaic panels on every home and a number of domes housing community gardens. Residents are invited to grow vegetables, herbs and fruits in the community. 60% of the neighborhood is reserved for green spaces and there are two lakes fed with recycled grey water. There are also horse and cycling tracks going around the neighborhood. There is an international school and an autism treatment center. Dubai Sustainable City was also awarded as the happiest community in the GCC at the first Gulf Real Estate Awards. Next door are the brightly colored Vaha Villas in a community known as Lyon. All properties here are semi-detached houses and were completed around 2011. The neighborhood is green and has some of Dubai's lowest square foot prices. Next we have Rukan by Reportage Properties. Rukan is fairly small and still under construction but will feature Dubai's only one bedroom townhouses. On the pricier end we have Al Habtur Polo Resort and Villas. What makes this community unique is the polo field in the center. Similarly on the expensive side is Al Barari, again one of Dubai's greenest neighborhoods. Featuring detached and semi-detached villas as well as apartments, the community is some of Dubai's most modern residential buildings. Nearby is Living Legends, a villa community built around a golf course. Launched in 2007, the area was hit hard by the financial crisis and saw the first villas being completed almost 10 years later in 2016. However, the golf course is still not done as of 2023. Similar financial constraints hit the villa community Falcon City of Wonders across the highway. We covered Falcon City in depth in our video on all Dubai neighborhoods. In short, only a small number of villas were ever completed. The detached and semi-detached houses here are moderate in price when adjusted for size and are finished in a variety of American styles. Adjacent to Falcon City is Sopa Reserve, a recently launched community featuring extra spacious and luxurious villas by Sopa Properties. Next up is the Mark Hills, 
not to be confused with the previously covered Demark Hills too. Demark Hills was formerly known as Akoya and centers around the Trump International Golf Club. The community features pricey villas branded as Trump Estates, Cavalli Villas and Paramount Villas. There are also more affordable non-branded townhouses and semi-detached houses. On the perimeter of the community are a number of high-rise apartment buildings. Beverly Hills Drive, envisioned to become an expensive shopping street, and the Mark Hills Mall, a neighborhood shopping center. Right next door we have the Mark Lagoons, built around an artificial lagoon with a multitude of water features. You can find all house sizes here from townhouses to extra large freestanding villas. The neighborhood is split into clusters modeled after a variety of European leisure destinations, such as Santorini, Marbella, Portofino, Venice and Monte Carlo. Construction just started. Nearby Tilalal Gaf is also built around a lagoon. However, the architectural styles here are more minimalist than modern. The community features competitively priced townhouses, all the way to 20 million US dollar mansions with some of Dubai's most extravagant designs. Contrary to many other recently launched developments, Tilal Al Gaf already has a number of show villas and a community center standing, as well as a section of the lagoon with an artificial sand beach. There are also preliminary plans to build a number of apartment buildings in the community. Tilal Al Gaf is controlled by the Majid Al Futaim Group, which also owns more of the Emirates and the Kafur franchise in the UAE. Going north, we have Motor City with Dubai Autodrome. Found here is a small subcluster of townhouses and detached houses. Like other communities that started construction before the 2008 financial crisis, lot sizes are large, private pools are common, and the architectural style is Mediterranean inspired. The villas in next door Sport City are similarly old, with a completion date of around 2011 but considerably more expensive due to the integrated golf course. While the smallest units are townhouses, Sport City also contains a number of mega mansions. Even more upscale and much more recent in construction is next door Jumeirah Golf Estates. Villas here are situated around a vast 36-hole golf course that regularly hosts the PGA European Tour. A majority of homes is fully detached and features their own private pools. The clever community layout ensures that most houses directly face the golf course. Jewelry Hills is the latest addition to Jumeirah Golf Estates and features more modern designs. Square foot prices are accordingly on the high side. South of Jumeirah Golf Estates is Ema's recently launched Oasis development. The community will again center around artificial lagoons and cascading rivers. There will be a variety of properties from townhouses to supersized villas. However, so far the homes launched here are in the 2 million US dollar plus category. Square foot prices are moderate. More affordable are Jumeirah Village Triangle and Jumeirah Village Circle, also known by their respective initials JVT and JVC. Starting in Jumeirah Village Triangle, we have a large number of townhouses and fully detached houses, most of them in an Arabic design. Investors should be aware of the nearby power lines. Two schools, a number of sports facilities and a park are located in the center. In the much larger Jumeirah Village Circle, we only find a small number of townhouses, as the community primarily consists of apartment buildings. The townhouses here were all built by different, smaller developers and vary greatly in design. From modern to traditional. While JVC features the already open Circle Shopping Mall and various parks, there's currently no school located here. If you want it all, schools, a park, a golf course and a large shopping mall, you have to go to Dubai Hills Estate by EMA Properties. There's even a King's College London Hospital here. We have the Maple subcluster consisting of semi-detached houses. 
the CETRA cluster consisting of fully detached houses and the Dubai Hills Golf Club community with both semi-detached and freestanding villas. Around the golf course you also find some of Dubai's priciest villas costing tens of millions of US dollars. Square foot prices in Dubai Hills Estate, even in the Maple Cluster without the golf course, are among the highest in all of Dubai. Here you pay for image and location. Further west in Basha we have a variety of smaller independent townhouse developments in different styles. Square foot prices vary. Over in Jumeirah there are many villas and townhouses, however only Acacia Avenues allows for foreign investment. Supply is small, prices are high and the location is exceptional. Emirates Living, a large community by Ima, consists of Emirates Hills, the lakes, the meadows and the springs. Homes are available here at varying price points from 500,000 US dollar all the way up to tens of millions. The priciest villas are found in Emirates Hills and the lakes, as both communities face golf courses. Emirates Hills in particular features some of Dubai's most expensive custom-built homes. Styles, however, tend to be more traditional than in other premium Dubai communities. The Meadows nearby is similarly well located but slightly lower priced. Some properties here have direct lake access. The Springs are the most affordable and most houses here are semi-detached. Only a small number of freestanding villas. Two communities next door are Jumeirah Islands and Jumeirah Park, both by Nikhil. Jumeirah Islands is the pricier one and features mostly traditional Arabic villas facing an artificial lake. More recently, a few properties here were upgraded to a postmodern style. There's also a small subsection consisting of townhouses. While Jumeirah Islands were completed by 2007, nearby Jumeirah Park was completed as recently as 2015. Houses here are all detached. Let's move on to Al Fujan, a neighborhood consisting of apartment buildings, with villas and townhouses at its core. The entire eastern half is developed by Nakheel, while the western half is built up by a large number of developers, including Nakheel and Danube. In the eastern half, we find the oldest section of the community, completed in 2012 and designed in the traditional Arabic style. Also located here is Morouche al Fujan, a new development of modern, semi-detached and detached houses. In the west, on the other hand, we find a large variety of architectural styles, and most homes here are smaller townhouses. Some of them are developed by smaller developers and some of them by Nakheel, such as Tilal Al Fujan and Murouche Al Fujan West. Square foot prices are reasonable given the location of the community and the newness of the buildings. Further west we have Jebel Ali Village, another community by Nakheel. The center features detached houses amidst landscape parks and walkways while the periphery is composed of townhouses. Next door is Vassal Gate, a mixed-use community in its early stages, by Vassal Properties. Already built here is Festival Plaza Mall, with an Ikea and a hypermarket, as well as the Gardenia townhouses. Further southeast we have Dubai Investments Park 1 and 2, an industrial and commercial neighborhood with warehousing and light manufacturing. Dubai Investments Park 1 features a metro station as well as the green communities east and west. Completed between 2007 and 2009, homes here are spacious and relatively affordable in terms of square foot prices. There's a lake, a retail park and multiple apartment buildings. Right next door, also in Dubai Investments Park, is the recently launched Verdana Townhouse Community by Reportage Properties. Let's proceed to Dubai South, the UAE's largest integrated master plan as we discussed in detail in our video on all Dubai neighborhoods. 
Dubai South consists of multiple subclusters. In Expo City, we have the so-called Expo Valley, a villa community built in place of one of the former parking lots of Dubai's Expo 2020 World Fair. Expo Valley is built around an artificial wadi, or dry riverbed, and consists of townhouses, semi-detached and detached homes. Expo Valley has one of Dubai's highest ratios of green spaces, with around 50% of the land being dedicated to parks and a mini nature reserve. Fittingly, all properties here are styled in earth tones. Further south, we have the large residential community of Dubai South City. Developed by the company with the same name, Dubai South, a subsidiary of Dubai Aviation City Corporation, which is also responsible for the nearby Al Maktoum Airport. In Dubai South City, there are two villa neighborhoods. First, we have the Pals, an affordable community of already partially complete townhouses and semi-detached villas. Second, we have South Bay, a new off-plan community split into sub-clusters and centered around an artificial lagoon, as is popular among many newer developments. Accordingly, square foot prices are higher. On the other side of Al Maktoum Airport, we have Ima South, a large master-planned community surrounding a golf course. Here we find the so-called Expo Villas that were sold off plan in 2019 at the record low price of less than a million dirhams. Now completed, they form one of four subclusters, along with the pricier semi-detached villas, standalone villas in the center and an apartment building. While the golf course is partially complete, you can't play here. It is currently on hold. Further south, we find Azizi Venice, announced just a few weeks ago. Azizi Venice features another artificial lagoon with modern villas around it, as well as a multitude of apartment buildings in the style of the already complete District 1 residences in Mohammed bin Rashid city. Azizi also announced the construction of a mid-sized neighborhood mall. Next, let's have a visit to the often overlooked Dubai industrial city. Unknown to many investors, here you find Dubai's most affordable homes, at 600 dirhams or just 160 US dollar per square foot. However, the availability of properties here remains small compared to other neighborhoods. While technically located just over the border in Abu Dhabi, Al Ghadir village may still be considered one of Dubai's suburbs. Developed by Abu Dhabi's renowned Alda Properties, you can again find some of the area's most affordable properties here. Further up north, again on Dubai's side of the border, we find Jebel Ali Hills. While the land here and the infrastructure are under the control of Miras, the company sold individual plots to smaller developers and individuals for self-development. If you're looking to build your own custom-designed villa, this is one of the most affordable places to do so in Dubai. It is one of the few places where foreigners or non-GCC nationals are allowed to outright buy land to build their own homes. That being said, you can also find ready villas here, usually built by a range of smaller developers, with a wide range of architectural styles. These are all villa neighborhoods in Dubai, however, the biggest questions remain. Which of these neighborhoods offer the highest rental returns? And which ones are likely to outperform the market in terms of capital appreciation? This is where our research comes in. We collect and analyze a wide range of market data to project rental and appreciation returns for all Dubai neighborhoods. Choosing the right area can potentially save you hundreds of thousands of US dollars over the duration of just a few years. Check out our real estate analysis services on our website, thedubainavigator.com. Here you can also book a free consultation with us to learn how we can assist you. We are 100% independent, do not sell real estate and have never worked with any developers or real estate agents. We also offer a range of complementary services, including business and residence relocation to the UAE, international tax strategies, and tax-optimized inheritance planning. 
visit us at thedubainavigator.com today. Thank you for watching.